Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا حبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما لكم لا تقاتلون في سبيل الله والمستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان الذين يقولون ربنا ربنا اخرجنا من هذه القريه الظالم اهلها واجعل لنا من لدنك وليا واجعل لنا من لدنك نصيرا Dear brothers and sisters I've recited a very simple and yet a profound verse from the Quran I say a simple and a profound one. Simple in the sense of its simple message. Profound in the sense of its implication. Allah says, and what is wrong with you? That you refuse to struggle in the cause of Allah when men, women and children are crying out, saying, O oh, Lord, أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِي الْقَرِيْتِ الْطَارِذِ أَخْرُهَا Send someone, Ya Allah, who can rescue us from these people who are oppressing us. Send us somebody who can protect us. And send us somebody who can help us. Brothers and sisters, this verse is apt, appropriate for this moment in time as we look around at the plight of the Muslims every corner of this earth. It appears that we Muslims have become orphans with no protector, no helper, and no child. It does not appear. In fact, if you assess the situation of the Muslim world today, it would stand out as a fact. From Myanmar to Palestine. From China to Yemen throughout Middle East and North Africa, Central Africa, even as far down south as South Africa. Persecution of Muslims has become endemic today. It's become normal. It's become fashionable to attack Muslims. It's become fashionable and acceptable to deride Muslims, mock them, ridicule them. Not just ridicule and mock them, but destroy their mosques uproot them from their homes, from their ancestral homes. It seems it's become normal to make them homeless, stateless, hopeless, and dispossessed. Under such circumstances, what do we do? 
we have a living example of this that's been unfolding right in front of our eyes in Gaza, in Palestine, over the last few days. Every time I mention Gaza, I hear a sigh of disquiet and disbelief. The resignation that many people have come to conclude that there is nothing else we can do except pray and cry internally. Yes, you should cry. And yes, you should pray. Yes, you should feel ashamed of yourself that you have not, and we have not done enough to protect the brothers and sisters of Gaza. In fact, we have not done enough to free Al-Aqsa from occupation for the last 70 years. As an Ummah, we have failed. Surely we have failed. Therefore, you should feel ashamed. You should feel deeply ashamed for our failure. My brothers and sisters, there are some myths or myths that are being spread across the world, especially the PR machinery of Israel, the barefaced lying PR machinery of Israel. It tells a lie keeping a straight face. It tells a lie telling the world that they are the right ones and the ones that they are shooting are the wrong ones. And it gets away with it. That's the challenge you and I have. The state of Israel is a bad news for the Jewish people. It's a bad news for the Middle East. The state of Israel is bad news for the world at large, for the way it is behaving, for the way it is conducting, and for the way it's been persecuting the Palestinians for the last 70 years. As Muslims, it is haram to hate any human being. As Muslims, you're not allowed to hate Jewish people. As Muslims, you're not allowed to hate Christians. You're not allowed to hate any individual people or collective group of people because they're all creations of Allah. You may dislike their action, of course. You may criticize their action, but you cannot be racist. You cannot be prejudicial against people individually or collectively. So anyone who says Muslims hate the Jewish people, they need their fact checked. In fact, they need to be challenged. When Israel constantly says that all the Arab nations and the Muslim of the world hate them, when Israel says that, it says a lie. Muslims do not hate the Jewish people. They have never hated Jewish people. How can we hate people of Allah, Musa alayhi nation? How can we hate people of Daud alayhi nation? How can we hate the people who had prophets like Sulaiman, who had prophets, all good prophets who came, whose message was the same as the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How can we hate the people like that? How? It is a myth that Israel often regurgitates to create hysteria and dislike of the Muslims and Islam across the globe. And for that, Israel should be ashamed of itself. You know, it pays money to create lies. It invests money to regurgitate lies. The second lie that they spread, that Palestine actually never existed. It's always been a land without people. What kind of nonsense is this? For thousands of years in Palestine, people have lived. The name of the country may have changed, and it has changed throughout history. Yes, many countries' names have changed. Saudi Arabia never existed. It's become Saudi Arabia today. Jordan never existed. It's become Jordan today. United Kingdom, in the way we see it, never existed thousands of years ago, but it became a country, a sovereign country of its own, only recently. To say Palestine never existed is a lie. To say it was a land without people is a lie. Palestinian people lived in that country, in that land for years, thousands of years actually. In fact, the earliest civilization, earliest remnants of a village is in Palestine. My brothers and sisters, if you ever go to Jericho, you will see an amazing small Enclave. And you see in there bananas, pine apples. You see date trees, olive trees. You see all of the vegetation under the sun. I even saw mangoes with my own eyes in that particular area. And I was astonished. To say that this is a land without people is a lie. For hundreds of years, Jewish people, Christians, and Muslims have lived side by side in that land. Throughout history, there has been troubles, of course, orchestrated by emperors and empires. 
But to say that land without people and Palestine was a barren land is a lie, a bare-faced lie. In 1948, Israel was created, artificially, under the Zionist movement of constant terrorist activities in mainland Europe, in Palestine, and even in America. Zionist movement was a terrorist organization at that time, causing terror activities to persuade the Western government, especially the British government, who was the caretaker of Palestine, to give away Palestine to the Zionist movement who wanted to have a land, a home for the Jewish people. In 1918, exactly 100 years ago, Balfa Declaration gave and paved the way for creation of Israel, which came to realization and fruition in 1948. When Israel became a state, it did not become a state with the people only inside. It expelled thousands, if not millions, of Palestinians and imported from Russia, Eastern Europe, and America Jewish people to come and populate and steal the land and the property of the Palestinians who were the original inhabitants of that land. That's a fact. Gaza Strip that we have today, that little enclave with the corner, most of those people around that particular region escaped their homes in 1948 and took home in Gaza Strip. It became a refugee camp. When Israel says that these people are terrorists, how do you call Palestinians living in an open refugee camp a terrorist? How? They have been imprisoned for the last 70 years in their own homes. They have been dispossessed in their own homes for 70 years. Israel controls land, land, air and sea of every section of Palestine, of Palestinian territory, whether it is West Bank or Gaza. You can't even take one small item with you unless you get approval from Israel. Medicine, food, agricultural items, building products, everything must be listed and approved by Israel. The water that is in Palestine, electricity, that the Palestinians in Gaza use are on a ration. I remember one of the ministers within the Israeli Knesset once said, actually not, an advisor to Ariel Sharon. What an evil man he was, Ariel Sharon, the butcher of Sabra and Satina. An advisor to him said, we have put the Palestinians in Gaza on a diet. We won't allow them to die out of hunger, but we won't allow them to become too fat. That was not reported by any of the newspapers in our country. That was not reported by the liberal elite of the West. That was not anti-Arab statement. No, it was accepted. When in the Knesset, members of Israeli parliament often called for the total destruction of the Palestinians, total destruction of the Arab people, total destruction of people around, it is never a genocide. It is never considered a crime. Barefaced lies. Barefaced lies. I quote you Tayyip Erdogan's statement. May Allah protect him. He said recently, you cannot establish a, a state over a people's blood. You cannot have justice by, spe uh, by spilling innocent people's blood. In Gaza, what happened recently was no surprise. 70 years of persecution, imprisonment for the last 16 years in one area, walled and surrounded by the Israeli army. Palestinians, the people of Gaza were protesting. They were not near the fence necessarily, they were hundreds of meters away. Israeli army was shooting, and not randomly shooting, targeted shooting. Targeting people's eyes, head, and chest. It's called targeted assassination. And they were using five millimeter bullets. You know what five millimeter bullet does? It enters your body and mashes everything around, destroys it from within. Deliberately, they used that bullet. What would a man who was on a wheelchair holding a, a rock on his hand, what kind of a threat would he be to the Israeli soldiers? What weapons did the Palestinians have in their hand? 
when the general came onto television to say Hamas has led this. Where was Hamas? Every time Israel bombs Palestinians and kills children, men and women, it blames Hamas for it. Do you think we are so stupid or foolish? Brothers and sisters, it was targeted assassination of Palestinian innocent people, women, men and children, even a child was not left from their barbarity and brutality. The third myth they regurgitate and they tell you to believe is that if you criticize Israel, you become anti-Semitic. I have been accused of anti-Semitism because I criticize Israel and Zionism. In a new definition, the Zionist lobby has proposed that any criticism of Zionism should be equated to anti-Semitism. Why? Zionism is an ideology, it's not a religion. I respect Judaism. In fact, I respect Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is my religion. Islam invites you to criticize Islam if you want. I have every right to criticize Judaism. I have every right to criticize Christianity or any religion on this earth. Just like you have every right to criticize Islam, no problem. Discussions and debates make us richer. But why is criticizing Zionism tantamount to anti-Semitism? Why? Are you trying to silence critique? Are you trying to silence uh, us so that we can not criticize your brutality and barbarity? Anti-Semitism is wrong, and we must root out anti-Semitism from every section of our society. Islamophobia is wrong. We must root out Islamophobia from every section of our society. Just in case you didn't know, anti-Semitism is being hateful, vengeful, calling for violence, and racist towards Jewish people. Jewish people. Anti-Semitism is wrong. And I'll be the first one to stand up and protect the rights of the Jewish people. When Hitler and his, ma and his army were persecuting Muslims, uh, uh, the Jewish people, Muslims were protecting them. The Imam of Paris Mosque risked his life and the lives of his family and hid hundreds of Jewish people in his masjid protecting them and their honor. Muslims took the Jewish people in Morocco. Muslims opened up their doors for the Jewish people to come and live in many parts of the Muslim world, including Turkey. Anti-Semitism is wrong. In fact, anti-Semitism is a sickness that stems from hatred of the Jewish people from the core of the heart of European narrative from Hitler and his likes. So don't tell me I can't criticize Zionism. Zionism is an ideology, just like communism is an ideology, just like socialism is an ideology, just like capitalism is an ideology. I have every right to criticize it. If you want to talk about religion, as an imam, I have every right to talk about religion. Moses would never support Zionism. Moses would never support the state of Israel in the way it persecutes people in the way it violates its own citizens or denies its own people of citizenship. Moses, the prophet of God, would never support it. But is state of Israel interested in Moses? No. Is state of Israel interested in religion? No. It's a secular state with an ideology that you can't criticize. If you do, you risk being put behind bars. What an absurd way. That's an absurd proposition. Brothers and sisters, we stand together for the rights of Palestinian people. We will defend the rights of Palestinian people. They have a right to exist. They have a right to self-determination. United Nations divided up Palestine into two parts, 50-50. Palestinians have 50% and the Israelis have 50%. You know what? I'm happy to accept that division, even though there is a huge sacrifice that was made by the Palestinians because but today, Israel controls 100% of Palestine. 100% of Palestine. And when they say we don't, they're lying again. Ask a person of West Bank. If they want to come out of West Bank and go to Jerusalem to pray, will they be allowed to go? They have to seek permission. They have to show their ID card. They'll be held in the checkpoints for hours. If they need to get medical attention from other countries, they need security clearance from the Israeli government. They're not free to move around. They're not free to trade. And people of Gaza are in a prison. 
Israel is lying again. It loves lying and tells the whole world everyone else is lying. It's got bare faced, naked, shameless lie. We support the people of Palestine and their right to creating their own state. We support creating state for all people in fact. You know, two states and a solution is long dead. I believe it's dead. Two states for Palestinians and the Israel and the Israelis is dead. It cannot work. It has not worked and it will not work. It came out of Mr. What's his name? The President of America. No, Donald Trump, no. He doesn't have that kind of brain. Donald Trump is a bad news for all of us. We'll talk about Donald Trump later. I'm, to I'm talking about the previous President Bill Clinton. In order to cover up his misdemeanor at home, the relationship that he was having with other people, he came up with this solution, two-state solution, let's have it very quickly. Where is the two-state solution, Mr. Bill Clinton, 20 years on? It's dead. There's only one solution for all people. It is one state for all people. Palestinian people, Muslims, Jewish people, Christian people, people of faith and no faith, all people to live side by side in one state. That's what we want. That's what I want. That's what makes sense. Nothing else makes sense. Nobody is ever suggesting that the Jewish people should never exist. They're stuck for a lot. Who would ever suggest something like that? It would be haram for anyone to say anything like this. Anyone plotting and planning to kill any Jewish person would be wrong. People need to stand next to one another. Even if you are of a different religion, Quran invites me to live with my neighbor, even if my neighbor is a person of different religion, different belief, and different background. It does not allow me to take lives. It does not allow me to cause terror. It does not allow me to rain down bombs and guns and shells to destroy other people. No, it doesn't. Anyone who tells you they're telling a lie. It is difficult for me to stand here and speak to you, my brothers and sisters, objectively. Because injustice will create passion inside you. And injustice suffered by the Palestinians, enough is enough. 70 years of an injustice that has been not dealt with adequately. United Nations can't do anything. Muslim leaders are absolutely inept on doing anything. Look at what the Saudi Arabian government says. The Palestinians should accept any peace offer Donald Trump makes. Hello? Which country do you come from? You come from an illegitimate rule because you don't even have a legitimacy to rule Mr. King or Prince of Saudi Arabia. Who gave you the mandate to rule? Who created that country? Who voted for you? Who gave you the allegiance? Nobody. You have zero mandate. Zero mandate. Prince of Saudi Arabia and kings of the Middle East. Zero mandate. If there was freedom in the Middle East, if there was a free and fair election in the Middle East, all of those despots and dictators would be in prison, would be running to find a place to hide because they will never come to power for they don't deserve power. They have usurped power. They have stolen power. And they're living on the stolen properties of the Ummah at large. Every single leader of the Middle East, every single one of them. Nobody gives you the moral right to tell the Palestinians what to accept and what not to accept. Palestinians must have the right to determine their future. If you truly believe in their future, then give up your throne and let the people of Saudi Arabia elect their own leaders. If you truly believe in people's right to elect king and the rulers of UAE, go on, give up your rule and let the people of UAE decide their future. Bahrain the same, Kuwait the same, every single despot. Give it up if you're true to your word. But you're not true to your words because you're also bare-faced, naked, shameless liars. I have no, no embarrassment in saying that today because they have failed the ummah. They have failed the ummah. Palestine, our first Qibla. Al-Aqsa, our first Qibla. Occupied for 70 years. Nothing has been done to free it from the occupation. And that's a shame. That's a shame on the entire Ummah. We need to do something about it constructively. May Allah forgive us for our failures. May Allah free Al-Aqsa from occupation. May Allah free our first Qibla from occupation. And may Allah restore peace and justice for all people of the world. وآخر الدعوانة أن الحمد لله رب العالمين
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. My dear brothers and sisters, it's the first Jum'ah of Ramadan. Our dear brother spoken about something that would be spiritually uplifting for me. But I can't. I just can't ignore what's happening. 60 people were killed cold-blooded in one day by one rogue, unscrupulous, unaccountable, wouldn't give a monkeys of a state called Israel. I can't talk about anything but that. The way forward for us as brothers and sisters is simple. The way forward is simple. If the Muslims of the, of the Middle East were free and united, this would never happen. If the Muslims of the neighboring countries, in Syria, in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Saudi Arabia, in UAE, in Qatar, in Kuwait, if I've missed out any one of them, all of them, if they were united, today, Al-Aqsa would have been free. Today, Al-Aqsa would have been free. That this unity is the problem. Wherever you are, no matter what nationality you come from, you must encourage Muslims to unite again. Rouse the passion of the Ummah to unite again. We need the Salah Haddin of 21st century who can rouse the Ummah to unite the Ummah to free al Aqsa from occupation. We need the Salah Haddin of our time today to rouse the Ummah to rid the Ummah of the despots and dictators. We need this Ummah to rise again become the standard bearers of justice, adli wal ihsan, and excellence. Wa idaidil qurba, and compassion and charity. Wa inha'anil fahshai wal munkar, and stay away from evil, shamelessness, wal baghi, and rebellion. We need an ummah defined by these characteristics, justice and fairness. Excellence and compassion. This is the problem of this ummah. This ummah has become too decadent from within. This ummah has become too insular and too worldly. This ummah has ignored the coming of the death is that is awaiting for them in the hereafter. This ummah has nothing but misery if it doesn't change. Unity is number one. Number two, freedom in all Muslim countries. Total freedom, freedom from their own dictators and despots and freedom from the Western imperialist interference on a regular basis. Britain, America, France, Australia, Germany, keep your noses out of the Middle East. Leave the Muslim countries alone. Let them breathe freedom. Let them develop themselves. Muslims tried in Egypt, right? They tried in Egypt. They became free for a few days. But we couldn't stomach it. So a dictator came and took over and we stayed silent. That's the hypocrisy of Western governments, unethical foreign policies. We must encourage the Muslim countries to become free. Number three, every Muslim country should have democratic governance, transparent, open and accountable governance. And four, we as citizens of our country must Ensure our MPs, our parliamentarians, sign up to a fair, ethical foreign policy for the Middle East and the Muslim world. And number five, in this country, you as Muslims can play a vital role. Your struggle in the cause of Allah, your struggle when they make dua, when they say, Rabbana akhrijna min hadhil qariyati al-dhalimi ahluha, waja'al lana min ladunka waliya, waja'al lana min ladunka nasira. When they make this dua, you can be their helper, you can be their protector, you can help them find freedom. How? By engaging in your work in this country. By engaging in politics, by engaging in society, by taking responsibility, by making a contribution to the well-being of this country, by showing that you care. And finally, by sacrificing your money and your wealth in charity. Money and your wealth in charity. Give! When you leave today, my brothers and sisters, empty your pockets on your way. Sponsors, the, sponsor the orphans in Palestine. Not let, let that, there be one single Palestinian orphan left on his own or her own. Let them be sponsored. Give your money away. It's only one pound a day. 
one pound a day. Thirty pounds a month, very little. Eighty percent of water in Palestine is not in Gaza is not drinkable. Give them water projects, support them. Open up schools. We will rid the evil of the world with something that is better. They may be shooting at you and me. We will not shoot back. They may be throwing bombs at you and me. We will not throw bombs back. We will give something that is better. Moral education. We'll give the world that is better. Because Allah says that in the Quran, in the Ba'abilati, he ahsan. Give them, replace an evil with something that is better. We are not terrorists. We are not murderers. We don't take people's lives. But we believe in what Allah says. Man qatar nafsin bighayr nafsin al-fasadin fil ard. Faka'annama qatar al-nasa jami'a. Whoever takes a life, it is as though they have taken the lives of the entire humanity. Woman ahyaha. Faka'annama ahyaha nasa jami'a. Whoever saves a life, it is as though they have saved the lives of the entire humanity. We are about saving lives. Islam is about saving lives. Islam is about restoring balance on this earth. Islam is about justice and fairness for all people. Islam is about freedom for humanity. Islam is about fighting against slavery. Islam is about freeing ourselves from the worship of capitalism. Islam is about realizing human beings' true potential, true potential on this earth. Islam is the solution, it's not the problem. For as long as you keep quiet about it, there'll be no change. We need to speak about it. We need to start practicing. We need to make a change. May Allah make this Ramadan a moment for change for all of us. May Allah enable us to become better people. Ya Alhamdulillah, forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Forgive us for our mistakes, Ya Allah. Ya Alhamdulillah, Ya Akram or Akramin. Free Al-Aqsa from occupation, Ya Allah. Free Palestine from occupation, Ya Allah. Free Gaza from occupation, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is occupied, Ya Allah. Free the world from tyrants, Ya Allah. Free Syria from the tyrants, Ya Allah. Free Yemen from the troubles, Ya Allah. Free Yemen from the war, Ya Allah. Free Somalia from the troubles, Ya Allah. Free Sudan from the troubles, Ya Allah. Free Kashmir from occupation, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahmin. Free every part of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahmin. Bless us in the month of Ramadan, Ya Allah. Bless us with your forgiveness, Ya Allah. Bless us with your forgiveness, Ya Allah. Bless us with your mercy, Ya Allah. Bless us with your mercy, Ya Allah. Bless us with your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahmin. Bring us together, Ya Allah. Increase our love, Ya Allah. Protect our children, Ya Allah. Have mercy on those who have passed away, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, give shifa from your shifa to those who are not well, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahim, unite our hearts together, Ya Allah. Make us the better people, Ya Allah. Make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirat hasana, khina ala banna. Rabbana, afrig alayna sabra, wa sabit aqdamana, wa nsulna ala al-qawm al-kafirin, wa hafazna min al-qalimin. Rabbana, taqabal minna inna kanta samu al-alim, wa tuba alayna ya maulana inna kanta tawabu rahim. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعلمكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم وأشكروني ولا تكفرون والله يعلم ما تصنعون